I didn't want to do this so quickly. But after my troubles with Disney, I decided to take a break from Disney sequels for this episode. So instead, I decided to review a... Hasbro movie. Wait, what was I thinking? Aside from Disney, Hasbro is like, the most likely to copyright claim me. Ah. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. A show that lasted 9 seasons and 9 years, spanning from 2010 to 2019. And in My Little Pony A New Generation, our lovable main characters are all DEAD! Now, many years later, the three tribes of Earth Pony, Pegasi, and Unicorns are separated again. And that's where this movie picks up. It starts with a flashback to Friendship is Magic, except it's just the imagination of this young girl named Sunny Star Scout, and this young boy named Sprout Cloverleaf. Sunny insists that the three tribes used to get along, but Sprout disagrees. Sunny's friend, Hitch Trailblazer, while not as blunt, does back up Sprout's story. Those are lies! Hitch, tell him! Well, uh, that is kind of what our teacher said in history class, but... But hey, oh, we can play the game your way if you want, Sunny, I don't mind. Apparently, Sunny and her dad Argyle are the only Earth ponies who believe that the three tribes could coexist. He tells Sunny that it's their responsibility to make diplomatic contact with the other kinds, and they send a letter out into the atmosphere. Then Sunny's dad dies. Man, there's a lot of death already in the first few minutes of this movie. Sunny wakes up several years later and suddenly has the voice of Vanessa Hudgens. Today's the day, Dad. I actually have a plan this time. She then sings a song that is unironically a bop before running into Hitch, who is now the sheriff. He suspects that she's plotting some activist shenanigans and doesn't let her enter the building where some new anti-Pegasus and anti-unicorn gear is being displayed. Sprout is also the deputy now and he is great at his job. Sunny, completely ignoring Hitch, crashes the presentation anyway. And then she gets <laughs> After her activist message fails, Hitch tells her she broke several bylaws. Do you have any idea how many bylaws you broke in there? I'm sure you're about to tell me. Actually, for once, I can't, because there's so many! Even though pretty much all she did was enter the building when she wasn't supposed to, maybe she indirectly damaged their property too, but that's about it. It's established that, even though Hitch is the sheriff and Sunny is a controversial activist, they're still really good friends after all these years. And that this isn't the first time that Sunny's done something like this. Kinda seems like nepotism if you ask me, but... I'm the last real friend you got in this town. You really wanna lose me too? Threatening to stop being Sunny's friend unless she gives up on her beliefs? That's kinda manipulative. So now Sunny is sad and wishes her dad were there to help her. Then, almost immediately afterwards... Hi! Wow, Sunny was just handed what she wanted on a silver platter. No effort, no patience, no lessons learned, just BAM! Unicorn! Naturally, everyone is terrified of the unicorn, except Sunny, who escorts her back to her lighthouse home. Her name is Izzy Moonbow, and she... Can do this! <laughs> Important PSA, she's the best character in this movie. How sneaky are you? Uh, medium sneaky? Sunny learns that the unicorns actually don't have magic anymore, and is like, offended that Izzy can't do anything. No magic? Oh, but if it makes you feel any better, we did have it. Izzy, you don't owe Sunny anything. I thought Sunny just wanted to make friends, but now she cares about magic all of a sudden? Hitch and Sprout are outside, and Izzy decides to talk to them. Which doesn't work out. So then Sunny and Izzy escape and sing another song. Sunny figures that maybe the Pegasi still have magic, so they go to Zephyr Heights, where all the Pegasi live. And they just so happen to run into, like, the one Pegasus who is not afraid of them. But she quickly abandons them so these other Pegasi find and capture them. But that's an Earth Pony! They're harmless. They have very tiny brains. I've got this. That's creative. They are taken to the Queen, who has two daughters. The one they met before, named Zip Storm, and this one named... <laughs> They are taken to the queen who has one daughter, the one they met before. Her name is Zip Storm. Zip doesn't really want her mother to know that she knows them, so she just completely abandons them again and lets them get locked in. Mm, this isn't dungeon at all. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hitch is upset that Sunny ran off and now has branded her a fugitive. He goes off to find Sunny and makes it to Zephyr Heights and sees that Sunny and Izzy have been captured. Hitch's absence allows Sprout to assume the role as the town's sheriff, 
Through another admittedly catchy song, he riles up the citizens of Maritime Bay to support his dictatorial regime against the other kinds. Fun, right? Oh look, Zip didn't completely abandon them. How nice of her. Then this pony arrives. So Zip lets them out and takes them to her hideout, because she's not your typical princess. But I'm just so tired of living that ridiculous lie. That's why I come down here, to get away from all of that. I mean, it's kinda a predictable storyline, but whatever. So apparently none of the Pegasus can actually fly. The royal family has just been pretending this whole time. Our trio also learn about two crystals that they assume if they combine will bring back the magic for everyone. Why in the world would they assume this? So they plan to steal the Pegasus crystal during Pip. So they plan to steal the Pegasus crystal during a musical performance. Hitch is also there, and he dances. They get the crystal with relative ease, but embarrassingly, they drop it. Luckily, it is returned to them by Pip. Luckily, Zip remembers to go back and retrieve it. So now Hitch has joined them for some completely unexplained reason. Aren't you trying to arrest Sonny? Why would you ever join them? Well, because he doesn't have his badge, obviously. Because this badge means that I'm the she- ah! Where's my badge? Hey, you. Hmm? So he has no power to do anything at all. Oh, you know, I think I did see a shiny badgy thing on the ground a few hours ago. What? Hours? Well, maybe it's for the best. Between you and me, buddy. That badge was creating an unhealthy power dynamic. Naturally, Hitch is a little skeptical about the idea of giving magic back to the unicorns and Pegasi, because it's basically just empowering their enemies. I mean, yeah, why would returning magic automatically make the three tribes suddenly become friends again? If anything, it'll just make the Earth Ponies more scared of the other tribes. I know that friendship is magic, but I don't think that inherently means that magic is friendship. I'm all for the transitive property of equality, but I really don't think that applies in this particular situation. We also learn here that the reason that Izzy came to Maritime Bay was because she found the note that Sunny and her dad sent years ago. Cool, guess Izzy meeting Sunny wasn't as random as I thought it was. Our gang then head to Bridalwood, where the unicorns live, in hopes of finding the unicorn crystal. And it's a lovely place. Izzy, being much more crafty and expressive than the other unicorns, lives in a much more fantastical home than everyone else's. And here we get just an Oscar-worthy scene. Wait, wait, watch this! Hold everything! Ah, I've never gotten to use it with actual friends! <laughs> Ta-da! We don't have time for that right now. If we're gonna get the information we need on the- Oh my gosh! Sunny! And the fact that the frame lingers on Izzy just being utterly decimated just makes it so much worse. She literally just said how much actually having friends to have tea with meant to her. And you just reject her like that. What? What kind of a protagonist is this? You say you want the tribes to be friends, but you clearly have no idea how friendship really works, do you? And this never comes into play again. Sunny never really gets any repercussions for this or learns any lessons from her inconsiderate actions. Honestly, it'd be great if the movie leaned into the whole Sunny slowly becomes a terrible person premise by the end of the movie. Like, Sprout is just a misdirect. Sunny was the true villain all along. What a plot twist. But alas, that doesn't happen. After so rudely denouncing Izzy's interest, Sunny then demands Izzy craft them all horns to make them blend in. And because Izzy is actually a kind and amazing person, she is more than happy to, despite Sunny's treachery. Alright, I'm over-exaggerating a little, but still. So we get another song, yada yada yada. So apparently all the unicorns are very superstitious. If a pony ever says a forbidden word, we have to do a ritual to ward off the jinxies. Forbidden words? Magic, wing, feather, oh, and mayonnaise. What's wrong with mayonnaise? <laughs> Upon entering a shop, the gang learn that this guy has the crystal that they need. So Sunny challenges him to a dance battle to <laughs> the I mean for the crystal. And she loses pretty easily. But the movie actually then pays off the whole Hitch Likes Dancing thing and has him bust out some moves, surprising everyone and winning them the crystal. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Sunny eventually wins on her third try because rule of three. But they get caught as not being unicorns, so Hitch has to say all the jinxed words to distract them so that they can escape. 
the unicorns catch up to them, and the Pegasus Queen and her guards are also there. For some reason. Then Sunny tells both sides to shut up, so that she can unite the two crystals and bring back the magic. I gotta say, Sunny is pretty stubborn and authoritative in this movie, even though she has no right to be. Every pony stop! We're gonna get to the other side, find the crystal, and bring back magic. And once we do, you'll get to fly, you'll you'll get your, you'll get your back, and you'll have me in custody. Every pony happy now? We don't have time for that right now. If we're gonna get the information we need on the unicorn crystal, we can't stick out like sore hooves. We need to look like unicorns. Surrender the crystal or I'll use my powers against you. I'd like to see you try. No pony has magic! But we are here to bring it back. So Sunny and Izzy combine the two crystals, magic is restored, and everyone is happy again. Honestly, I thought this ending was a little rushed and left so many questions unanswered. Like, what happened with Sprout and his army? Is that never gonna be resolved? Nah, I'm just kidding again. Obviously, it didn't actually work, because Sunny hadn't learned her lesson yet. So she returns all the crystals, apologizes to everyone, and returns back to her lighthouse. SAD! She then puts away all her old My Little Pony memorabilia, like a fan realizing they're too old to still be watching kids' shows. Can't relate. But then she finds a third crystal, and a place to put all of them together! Conveniently both inside the lighthouse, again with Sunny finding the thing she wanted with no effort. So she goes to tell Hitch, but that's when they learn of Sprout's dictatorial regime. And he's planning on attacking the other tribe, so Sunny and Hitch go to warn them. Turns out, Izzy and Zip followed them, along with the representatives of the other kinds. When Sprout learns there's a way to bring magic back, he's like, well I don't want the other kinds to have magic again. So he rams his vehicle into Sunny's lighthouse. Sunny desperately tries to unite all the three crystals before Sprout kills her, but it doesn't work yet again. Man, this is just getting embarrassing for Sunny. Sprout's mom, despite enabling her son this whole time, finally decides he's gone too far and stops him. Kinda. Ultimately, the lighthouse gets destroyed, and then Sunny says, I understand now. It's not the crystals that need to be brought together. It's us. So the three tribes come together, and guess what? This causes the crystals to finally activate, restoring magic to everyone and, surprisingly, this does cause everyone to be friends again, at least for now. Okay, that makes no sense, but whatever. And I love how this movie does literally nothing with Sprout. He doesn't get punished, <sighs> nor does he get reformed. It's almost like even after he went into full-on crazy rage mode, still nobody cares enough to pay attention to him. That's gotta hurt. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. After the magic is restored, all of a sudden, Sunny turns into... What the? Sunny has wings and a horn now. Deal with it. And so, the four of them remain friends and are happy. And that's how the movie ends. Wow. Okay. This movie was just... spectacular. No, but in all seriousness, many of the technical aspects of this film were pretty good. The songs were decent and sometimes very enjoyable, spanning multiple genres but still not being too annoying. And the animation in general was just gorgeous. But the worst part about this movie is probably the wacky and strange way in which Sunny's character developed. First of all, things just happened to her, coincidentally, without her even needing to do anything. Second of all, she starts the movie advocating for friendship, then she cares more about magic, before finally learning that friendship is more important than magic. If you wanted to make her have this character development, then why not just make her start by caring more about magic than friendship in the first place? Otherwise, it's just a big, unnecessary circle. Thirdly, the movie frames Sunny as being a good person all throughout. Even though, if you wanted the friendship message to be emphasized, it would have benefited to have Sunny be framed as a flawed character in the beginning, so that her eventual lesson here would feel more impactful and real. As it stands, it feels more like Sunny is patronizingly explaining to everyone else what they did wrong, rather than taking some of her own accountability. And that leads nicely into my fourth point. Sunny is framed as a good person, but she really isn't. At many points, it feels like she only wants magic to use it for herself. Imagine if you had a friend who could fly. Can you actually fry pony brains with a single horn zap? <gasps> Can you make this float? No. Wait, you don't have any magic? 
She's also very controlling, as I've said before, even though she has no right to be, making her seem incredibly entitled. And that scene where she rejects Izzy's invitation to have tea? I mean, I honestly really liked it because it expertly showed Sunny's flaws, but then it never came into play again. Sunny never actually atones for a bad character by the end. She has an apologetic tone, but when you actually listen to what she's saying, it's not really an apology. It's a lecture. It's not the crystals that need to be brought together. It's us. We can bring back everything that was lost. But it's up to us. We can stay separated by fear and distrust. Or we can choose friendship. That's the true magic. And then she gets superpowers. After all of that, Sunny gets superpowers. But you know what the worst part is? Sunny isn't even the worst character of the four protagonists. Let's quickly rank them. Number one, Izzy. She's great. She's cute, she's bubbly, she's just genuinely sweet, and yet she is shown to have more to her, as she doesn't really fit in with the other unicorns, and has a desire for friendship stimulated by her perpetual loneliness. Being with you ponies has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. I guess, I just don't want our adventure to end. But Izzy, you'll get your magic. Number two, Hitch. He's alright, a little narcissistic, a little manipulative, a little controlling. Maybe he's not actually alright. No, but really, he's a good friend. And he is pretty charming. He's also very adorable. What? Wait, you can't just- But I'm a sheriff! And undoubtedly has the best character development and growth in the movie. Which isn't really saying much, but it's something. Number three, Sunny. Already talked about her, so let's move on. Number four, Zip. She's just, meh. An athletic girl who doesn't like the spotlight. That's really it. She isn't really that developed. But I guess that means she's not really that horrible either. And that's everyone! All the main characters! There are no more! No other protagonist! And if there was another protagonist, surely it wouldn't be someone whose entire personality is founded on social media jokes or anything, who is incredibly annoying anytime they're on screen, yet is never called out for being very self-centered, who only ever talks in social media speak and is not funny in the slightest, and has literally no reason to even be in this film, and just makes every scene after their introduction insufferable, and is a complete waste of the talent that is Sophia Carson! But yeah, I'm glad none of the four protagonists were like that. Final thoughts. Overall, the strange plot and Sunny's lack of character development just make the movie seem like a basic, underdeveloped kids film. Which I guess is fine. I just would've liked there to be something more to it. But at least Izzy is cute, the songs are good, and the animation is great. So it's not the worst movie in the world. Why do I always feel like I say that? Can I review an actually good movie for once? So thanks for watching guys, and I am going to go seriously rethink my life choices. See ya! I don't know, maybe I should just go back to Maritime Bay, where I'm needed. If that's what you want, but you should know, I'm actually glad you're here, Hitch. We all are. Hitch, what are you even doing here? <laughs>